What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. We have got some news for you that you've been waiting for. So it's time to share the news. Share the news. Okay, so I know you've all been waiting to hear just exactly what has been going on here on our homestead. And uh, before we get to that, let's talk about where this all began. Why did we start a homestead to begin with? Two professional people working with three kids and uh, way too much going on already. And then we decided to add more to it and make it more busy with more stuff to do. Why would we do that? <laughs> Why? Why would we milk goats when you could just go to the store and buy some milk? Who would do that? Some days I wonder. <laughs> To understand that, I think you gotta understand a little bit about our history and uh, where we came from. Me, I grew up in the city. Uh, everywhere I lived after that was pretty much a city. I have never really lived in the country. I don't know anything about farms and goats, chickens, and growing stuff other than things in pots uh, on the front porch with maybe, you know, the couch on the front porch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not my porch, someone else's porch. Either way, uh, I grew up in a different kind of situation. How did I grow up? Well, I grew up here, just like this. No goats, but chickens and woods and playing in the creek and all that. Moved to the city for a while. Decided that wasn't for me. It was very people-y. You don't like people much, huh? Nope. I like people. People like me. People like you. People do like me. It's not that I don't like people. I just like goats more. Fair enough. I like goats more as well. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Chloe. I really like Chloe. She's my girl. Having grown up in the city, uh, I, I had an appreciation for, you know, walking to the store and getting my milk and whatever else I needed, my bread, my eggs, whatever. I mean, I literally could just walk around the corner, go get what I needed and come right back. Uh, now where we live, none of that stuff's incredibly close. It's not that far away, but it is kind of annoying. I can't just walk to the store like I could then. But I also started to learn a little bit more about my food, a little bit more about my body, what I was putting in it, and realized that uh, I needed to start to care a little bit more about where that stuff was coming. And also, I found it fascinating. Animals, chickens, growing my own food, stuff like that. So, it's time for a change. Kenny also has an appreciation for the phrase, happy wife, happy life. That's, that's true. Everything else I probably make up, but that, that pretty much rules my life. All the time. For said wife to be happy, she said, let's move back to my childhood home in the country where the kids can play in the creek and I can have animals. I said, yay, let's do it. <laughs> that sounds great. And then he started buying flannels and grew a beard, and the rest is history. It's actually my uh, like superhero facade, you know, flannels and beards. You just hide behind it, and no one can see you. So we moved here, and first we had another baby, and then I was like, huh, I don't want to have any more human babies, so let's get some goats. I totally sold Kenny on the idea that it was to eat poison ivy, um, which they did do. They eat lots of plants that have taken over this property. So don't get me wrong, they were super helpful, but you know, let's be real, that wasn't the real reason. Definitely wasn't the reason. Definitely wasn't the reason. Um, and uh, you know, that turned into let's get a girl goat and then let's have some babies. And you know, then one day we got chickens. Chickens have really had a good impact on the tick population. And hey, who doesn't love fresh eggs and some little fluffy butts? And that's where we're at now. Yeah. We got goats, we have chickens. We attempt and fail multiple times to grow our own food, but from time to time we're successful uh, and we're happy. We're very, 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 very happy. Until of course, September of 2018, when we came home uh, from Tractor Supply, getting all the stuff we needed for our animals, I checked the mail. Lo and behold, a 
fat little letter saying you can't have those animals and you can't have that barn. So we got the letter. We went to the township. We filed the request for an exception like we were supposed to and the zoning officer recommended recommended we get an attorney. So we did. We went to our first hearing in November. Oh, thanks, Bridgie. See, eggs. We went to the hearing in November and discovered that uh, we would need some more information mm -hmm. for the township. We're granted a continuance. Um, our attorney went back in December and said, you know, can we amend the request and add uh, a request for a variance in addition to the exception so we could use all of our property and not just what was listed in the exception. If you remember earlier in this whole saga, we posted a video uh, trying to explain to you the difference between a variance and an exception. Uh, and, you know, we were trying to understand it and then trying to explain it to you, which was helping us to understand it a little bit more. Because had we known that from the very start, we could have saved ourselves money and time, unfortunately, because the zoning officer wasn't up front with us about everything, which now we understand to be expected. They will not be up front with you. Um, yeah, we didn't and had to start all over, which is fine. So the hearing was continued until February. In January, we got another letter from the township saying that our barn was in the wrong place. So the original lever, bleh, the original letter never said anything about the barn being in the wrong place, just that our contractor hadn't applied for a permit for it, mm -hmm. which we could easily rectify, right? Fill out the paperwork, submit the money, done. Um, this is the first we'd heard that it was in the wrong place. We waited for quite a while to find out when this next hearing was going to be. We knew it was continued, but we weren't given a specific date. Uh, on a whim, our lawyer called the office uh, of the township and said, hey, we haven't heard anything about the continuance. Uh, when's that meeting? And come to find out, it was that night. We had no clue. But... No problem. We got all our stuff together, pretty much dropped everything we were doing, uh, and that night we got our butts over there. Only to find out that um, the application that we had submitted for our variance was never submitted by the township officer. He actually had it in his hand that night. Uh, so instead of spending the rest of our time talking about things that we couldn't make a decision on or having to come back for a a separate meeting in addition to the one we were there for, they asked if we could just ask for a continuance again. Yep, three continuances. The good thing that came out of not being able to have the hearing in February was that we were able to ask to amend our most recent application to include the barn issue, uh, which did save us an additional $500 because at that point we were up to $1,000 in fees to the township. Quite a bit. Not to include our legal fees yet. Nope. Let alone the cost of putting up said fence that doesn't make any sense. This so, nonsense fence. Nonsense fence. So March 11th rolls around. We go back and uh, I'm just trying to keep it together at that point. Six months of stress and everything else. Our lawyer recaps the situation, uh, explains, you know, basic facts around everything. And um, lo and behold, this time, not only did the, not only was the zoning officer there, but also a lawyer to represent the township. Apparently their stance is to oppose any variance. Uh, that is requested. So don't get me started on that. Like, I don't know why that's the stance, why we don't have logical discussions about things. We just automatically oppose anything that is requested outside of what is written. Yeah, the, uh, it wasn't a pretty meeting. Um, it got very, very contentious, very fast. Uh, again, if we didn't have a lawyer with us, it would not have been a very pretty scene. Uh, it's at one point their lawyer really put the screws to us um, Courtney had to step out of the room 
Uh, we had to try to reconvene or gather ourselves, uh, but we got back in there, said what we needed to say, and then it went to a board decision. They went into a back room, had a discussion, and then came back out. It's important to understand that at this point, as they're coming out and getting ready to give us their decision, everything that we had gone through over the last few months um, just was built up. Uh, this, this was not an easy thing for us to go through by any means. It, it, it weighed on us every day. Uh, we tried to ignore it. We tried to, you know, do other things. We tried to pretend like it wasn't really happening or, you know, uh, that, yeah, everything's going to be great. No big deals. Uh, but it, it really, really, really got to us, uh, heavily. I just can't even begin to explain the, the, the toll it took, honestly. But we still remained positive as best we could. I mean, being negative was never gonna get us anywhere. And being, you know, we were angry, uh, but yet left that anger alone. We didn't, we didn't yell at anybody. We didn't do all the things that you do when you're unbelievably ticked off. That's not the road we wanted to go down. It wasn't how we wanted to represent ourselves. It's not who we are. And we didn't want to be those people. Uh, we wanted to be who we are. Positive, happy, um, trying to do something good for our family. Yeah, and people that try to do the right thing and, you know, live and let live. Everyone comes out of the secret board meeting room. And um, the first thing that we are discussing is the barn. So the variance to keep the barn where it is now. The board decided that we could keep the barn where it was. It is a minimal amount of space off, you know, four feet over 150 feet. So they determined that's not a big deal. Let's grant the variance. So awesome. I don't have to move a giant barn. And a concrete pad. Yeah, because that wasn't going to happen, let's be real. No. Next was the variance to allow us to use pasture that is in front of the front line of our house. To kind of recap, uh, we have five acres and about one and a half of that is front yard, front yard. Right, meaning it's between our house and the road. Mm -hmm. About 150 feet wide and 500 feet long. It's a lot of space. A lot of stuff to eat. Yeah, totally. And our ability to use that was denied. Denied. We cannot graze our animals anywhere in front of the front line of our house. And that line is apparently going like this right now. Whatever. And then finally was the exception to have uh, large pets or farm animals or livestock, right. however it was written. And this is the big one. This is the one that literally decides whether or not we are allowed to have our homestead or if we can't. Um, this is the one where we would decide if we need to move or if we stay here and just plant stuff, you know? Yeah. Keep in mind that there's about 12 deer that pretty much come through our property on a regular basis. I'd venture to say they kind of live here. There's about 18 wild turkeys that live here on this property. Uh, and, you know, the wasp population, mm -hmm. right? Pheasant, Pheasant, fox, yeah. raccoons. Lots of, lots lots of, of wildlife. animals. Yeah, lots, <laughs> lots, of, lots of wildlife. Lots of wildlife here um, in this residential area. Which, which you can have here, right? Yes. Just not goats and chickens. Got it. Yes. Right. So the exception. Um, we were granted the exception. Woohoo! Yay! What does that mean? Where does it leave us? What are we going to do next? Well, the first thing it means is that we can have our animals. Just uh, not as many as we have. Right. And not as many as we had hoped if we could use all of our property. Right. Um, I guess the stance was because we could have some, it was not a burden to restrict the amount of land we could use. 
Um, it was not a unanimous vote to deny our use of the, the front yard, mm -hmm. um, which in and of itself is a small victory, right? Yep. Um, means there's some people that understand what it is that we're trying to do. Right. Which is a good feeling. We have to downsize. Yep. I think what that's going to look like is we're going to have to sell a few goats so that we can keep goats and chickens. Um, we could keep the goat, all the goats and get rid of the chickens, but um, I, A, really like chickens too. Mm -hmm. Um, I like They're, eggs and, and they really control the bug population yeah. here. I can't imagine going back to the number of ticks that we had before chickens. So, I'm just not doing it. Yeah, There's I don't think no it's, it's not a good idea to get rid of the chickens. I mean, we've all had Lyme disease at this point uh, prior to chickens and the whole reason for chickens was to reduce the tick population and uh, have eggs. So I don't, I don't think we should stop that. Um, I think we, we need to keep them. Yep. So the goats will have to be reduced and uh, we'll just have to keep figuring it out along the way. Yeah. It will make it harder to produce milk year round with a reduced number of goats. I wish that was something I would have thought about during the hearing was to explain how that all mm -hmm. works, but you know, yeah. hindsight. The other thing we need to do is our fencing. And the way the letter was phrased or the statement that we got from the township afterwards with our approval, it, it doesn't sound as if we need to put up a permanent fence. So we're going to try to do a rotational grazing with the electric netting. They're going to have their homes where they're, they're away all the time. And then when we graze, we'll, we'll move them around with the, with the poultry netting, which really works for them. Yep. Um, it means we're probably going to need a whole lot more poultry netting. Uh, if anyone has a good deal with Premier One. <laughs> Let us know. Premier One, if you're watching, we'll definitely work something out. But yeah, we're going to have to step that up and come up with a plan on how we move around um, our backyard and side yard areas. The last thing is that um, this, this was our fight and we fought our fight we fought our fight with your help, financially, emotionally. Um, you watched our videos, you supported us with your comments, all those things, which is awesome and we love it. Thank you so much, couldn't have done it without you. But we're also gonna keep fighting for other people because we still think that the situation that we're in is silly. We think that there need to be some changes made, so we're gonna get more involved and we're gonna try to push to, to have some rules that make sense. We understand why there need to be some rules, uh, but we wanna make sure that if there's gonna be rules, that those rules are in place um, and make sense, uh, support what we're doing in our area, and, and that other people can not have to go through what we went through. Uh, I think another thing we, we would uh, like to do is create some sort of community group that gets other people involved uh, to do this with us and not just have to do it by ourselves. It'd be great to have resources for people to, to go to when they run into something like this that, that cites um, state-specific case law. Mm -hmm. um, when we got the, the approval letter in the mail, when we started looking through the, the case law that the township was using to make their decisions, it's like from the city of Philadelphia and the city of Pittsburgh. and. Um, you know, fortunately, things things worked out for us. It's not perfect, but it's definitely workable. Mm -hmm. However, um, had we known all of this information, I think there are some other things that yeah. we that we could have done. So, we definitely want to to support other people who yep. may go through something like this. That said, we need a little break first. I've been really stressed out. Yeah. 
yeah. I've been really stressed out about this whole situation. And in the meantime, you know, all of other life stuff is going on. Yep. Kids in school and, you know. Soccer. Stuff going wrong in the house and all of that. So I really just need to catch my breath. Yeah. If you've noticed, we've been a little bit behind in getting videos out each week. Uh, mainly it's because everything sort of came to fruition at the same time. And it's crazy right now. Um, this, again, this weighed on us so heavily that uh, we needed to, we needed a break. We needed to take some time for ourselves and each other. And like she said, stuff was going on with our kids at school. Uh, stuff was going on, like, you know, like life. Folks, yeah. life, that's, that's what's going on. So anyway, we wanna thank all of you again for all the support you've shown us. Uh, we also want to thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon on the next one. Have a great day, folks. Thanks.